A big question before we start really to go into the capture part of this series is of course what should we use for HDRI? Is it RAW or is it JPEG? This is a common question when we start working in this area. And I go here only with digital formats because everything film-based has a lot of problems finally. And with a digital camera on a tripod every picture is pretty much pixel on pixel. With film we have a lot of trouble to line them up and some other problems of course. I think we have reached the age of digital completely and we don't have to bother too much with film anymore, especially not when we talk about HDRI. Okay, so RAW or JPEG, what is the big difference? Normally we talk about a Bayern pattern when we talk about the sensor, at least CMOS standard sensors. There are different sensors available. And when I take only four pixels from this CMOS sensor that goes in each direction, thousands of pixels in each direction, then we have a very specific pattern and that's the standard. Again, there are other chips available who deal differently. So normally we have always two green pixels in it. There's just a green little filter on top of that, very tiny. And then we have one red and one blue here, always diagonal to each other. So now you will say, is that one pixel then? No. The truth is that we have then here again a red one. Here we would have a blue one. And the debayering process is since I would think 20 or more years a long discussion in color science. What is the best method to get from the limitations that we have with such a thing a nice picture again out where one pixel has R, G and B values which we need for the JPEG production directly in the camera. Normally this pixel here has a green value and it knows it is green and it knows it has two neighbors here, red twice and two times the blue one. So it can calculate a little bit and it can go even further and that is a longer story. On the end the pixels are so small and the changes per pixel will be not that big because they are really tiny. When you think about 20 megapixel images there's not so much change from one pixel to the next. So the mathematic here is of course critical, but it's not impossible to get something usable in terms of RGB out of that. But again, that is why RAW is sometimes smaller than other pictures, because we have only to deal with a third of the information here. Anyway, the most important part is of course, what should we use? RAW is exactly what the sensor gave us, or at least what we believe that the sensor has produced. JPEG, on the other hand, is a processed file already, and it is mostly processed toward something that pleases the eye. We can set up anything to process the RAW in the way we want to have it, of course, but whatever we do, we can change that later on, when the debayering process is better, we get better data out of the RAW. However, we want to know what we can do now to achieve the best HDRI from this. And that's pretty simple to say. RAW has a bigger file size. JPEG is a smaller file size. RAW is linear in terms of reproduction from the sensor. So it's linear light when we take our little curve here again. JPEG we have no idea. We might say it's this way or it's a different curve. Whatever it is, it is not clear to us. It is only pleasing to the eye. Most likely it is an S-curve, but whatever happens then per color here, we don't know exactly. Then we have compressions in it. And compression changes the quality of it as well. And when you remember all these curves that I have drawn, and when I go here with a nice little S-curve like this here into the game, something like that, then we remember the more horizontal these parts are here, the less differentiation we have. And that means we don't have a nice variety 
from dark to this to the normal bright values inside of one picture and all these values get calculated of course in HDI and so we have maybe a problem how this finally becomes available for an HDI again how it is processed will be discussed in a later episode here for now I want to conclude here first of all with the first rough decision there's a problem maybe in the JPEG and that has consequences so let's have a look here shortly to our picture style editor this is the one from Canon that will look a little bit different for every other camera Nikon or Sony or whatever you use that's not so important important is that you know what you get out of it and when I go here to the advanced button and I say only I want to have the color saturation completely cranked up because I like it then this is exactly when you load this into the camera as profile what you get as JPEG if I take this back to a neutral version whatever neutral will be here for this camera we get something more flat out of the camera and flat is normally what we get from raw it has no sharpening in it it has no curve applied to it it's just raw for a moment so can we see these differences and for that I go here now to the Adobe Bridge to compare just in raw and in JPEG here if you use Adobe products and that is maybe the most common use or the most common way to open Camera Raw images then we have to go here to open in Adobe Camera Raw and there are other products available who have maybe a completely different way of dealing with the bearing and all these options here and my suggestion is of course the color temperature should be exactly where the gray card indicates it for you or what you have measured with your color meter if you have one and then we have here of course two temperatures or two color sliders it's like a cross left to right cold and warm up and down is green and magenta and that covers pretty much the gamut that you have and so you can move up and down in it everything else for HDRI should be just to zero especially the curve especially the sharpening and I said this before so when we have everything set here to neutral then we can go ahead and open this picture here in Photoshop and I go immediately back to save some time to go to this JPEG and open this as well in Photoshop CS6 here and you will see we have here already a light different when it opened I go here out of my full screen mode I select this picture here I copy it with command C go then to my camera raw which is already converted debayered and everything and I paste the JPEG on top of it the JPEG had here a different profile so to match this and to have something comparable I convert this and now I have in the background here the raw format and this here is at the moment the result from the JPEG the simplest way of course to compare this is to go here to difference and it will be nearly black and to see what happens here I use the levels and we can see here all these pixels that I see at the moment or that I could see here already are the difference in the pictures exactly like this and when I crank this up to make that really visible you can see here exaggerated exactly where the difference is in terms of pixels from the compression from the way this image was created and finally saved as JPEG and what I have done here with the raw images so that's not that less of a deal I would think and so we should take care of those color values here so how to figure out what was the camera response curve that means what was after the sensor and before it was finally saved as JPEG how we can figure that out and how can we create a curve that works against exactly this 
For that, I have set up a little test, and I want to introduce you to that in the next part here in this episode. So I have here my green skin, not adjusted. <laughs> and this would be maybe uh, my representation here at the moment from my raw image. It's not really adjusted. We don't have the white point set up. We don't have a black point set up. And so it's pretty flat at the moment, but it's relatively neutral. You might find some variations in it. This is a standard gray chart. You could use also the Macbeth chart, which I will discuss later. And this is here the one that has the most gray values. It's specially printed. Don't do this just with a ink jet or something like that. These colors are very, very carefully sorted out. Each step is following a logarithmic step. So it's not just some colors. But you can do those things, of course, to get a rough evaluation of your scene, even when you set up something like this in Cinema 4D in the Illumination channel and posterize this. Okay, so and my representation of the JPEG and I went here way over the top, of course, to make my point. I have adjusted this in a huge way. And now comes the question, how do I get this green part here, the toned one, back to gray? So I have all the colors in the scene exactly fitting to my original one. And I want to see how I can get with one curve adjustment, get back to our neutral color. If that is possible at all, we will see. I will show you the way I do those things. And the simplest way is, of course, we go here just to difference. Then we can see here already how far we are off. And then we go to our layer adjustments and grab here just the curve tool. This curve tool here has a little hand and I love it really because we can click on it and then go into the picture and adjust exactly where we are. And the value that we adjust is exactly under the mouse indicator. And then I want to put this, of course, not to the whole picture. That would make no sense with Option or Alt. I just set this up here only for my green values. To see the differences in a better way, I use here the levels on top of that. And that works for both. And you can see here, we see a representation of the differences plus what we have here on top that is included. But that's not so important at the moment. We could go here and have a um, little square. And so we get then only the colors for this area here. But I don't care here at the moment. I don't want to see this here in the first place. I want to see this more. And you can see it's much clearer now. What we have to do here is, and that is why I have plucked the channels out, we go to the blue channel. We stay in the curve tool here. Blue channel is on. And I go here just to the blue curve. Click on my little hand. And then I click on one color chip or field. And then I try to find a point where it goes really black. And that might be somewhere here. I have to switch off all these other channels. And then I try again. At one point it goes black. And I have adjusted now this carefully towards black. Black means no difference and then I'm already there. So when I go down, it goes brighter. So I go in the, the opposite direction. And you see, I gradually change it here to black. It's never 100% the same because there's some noise in it. The charts have some problems, of course. And we try it here now. I did this before. <laughs> Sorry. And you see where this little circle is. There I was already. But I saw a little problem here. And I could grab this just like this. Now I'm black, but here I see a little problem. And that should be all for the blue already. That went quick. So I click on the green channel, use the green curve. And now I see only the results for the green. I start here in the middle again, go down, go up. And you see up goes very bright. So 
down was good. That's too much when it goes bright again because then the difference is bigger. I think this will go maybe up. You will see. Yes, that works. And then we start here to work on that. Go here a little bit up and down. And I do this now pretty fast here. I see differences in it and I would see even more if I adjust the levels later on a little bit more. So then I go here to the red channel, go to the red curve and start in the middle again. Try my best. Should start here. Goes brighter, so I'm way over the top. Oh, that's good. And then I go here. That works fine. I have here some problems. Up or down. Whatever gives me black, which means no difference, gives me here exactly what I need. So here I come closer. And I think we are good so far. So let's have a look. I go here to RGMB. You see here these curves. And I switch off my levels. And I go to my toned one. Go back to normal. And I can see what I have done here with my curves. I went from here to here. And I see here is a little bit too much red in it. I could go now crazy and waste your time. But you, I think you get the idea. So the difference from the starting point to this is tremendous. And the difference between both now is minimal compared to the start point. And then I can go here to my curve tool. And of course I have the option to load or save those things. And whatever I need then to do later on with other pictures I can do based on these curves here. And so this was pretty much what the simulated camera response curve would have been. Very extreme, as I said, but this is a way to adjust things pretty fast, pretty easy, and you see what the camera finally does to your picture. And in this way, you can get closer to the values that you had before. But keep in mind, when you open an image, that's not linear after you have saved it in a Photoshop file. You can't save from Camera Raw into a linear format. It's always a gamma-based one. And I will show you that in a later episode that it's really easy, visible what you're doing with that in Camera Raw. But that's another theme. That's again gamma and all of that. And we go to that theme again. This is the capture part and we want to see how we get up to speed in getting finally an HDRI image. So back to the question, what would be the better one? If you have the space on your hard disk and the camera runs nicely, <laughs> then use Camera Raw. If you are not so good in space to save all this stuff, then use JPEG. But as you've seen, it's a lot of work to get it finally to the state where the RAW was, or you set up the camera in the first place that you get no camera response curve, that this one here is pretty close to the RAW file from the start. And you can experiment with these guys here because you can load all of these curves back into the camera normally when you have uh, DSLR and then the JPEG is already very usable. But of course the JPEG is most of the time of course 8-bit and you can process the camera raw most of the time in 16-bit which gives you much more information and so I like to work with camera raw but JPEG is possible. That would be the rule of thumb, so to say, from this episode. Thanks for listening. Have fun with it. Bye-bye.